Hey, it's Tim here. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about two very simple to understand functions, count and count distinct. These are super easy to use. Let me show you how. Okay, I've got Superstore sales here. I'm going to connect to the American version, the second data source here on our save data sources. And we are basically going to build a very simple view. Okay, we're going to drag the product hierarchy, the subcategory onto rows. And then what we're going to do, just to give this table a bit of context, we're just going to bring in cells so we've got some information onto that. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to basically open up a calculated field. So let's go ahead and do that. And you'll see here that let me just make this a little bit smaller. And there we go. That's perfect. And let's just open this out so we can see what we're typing. So this is our calculation window. I'm just going to go ahead and type count. And you'll see that both of these come up count and count distinct. Let's first start with count. Let me just click on that and you'll see that when I do that, the right hand side uh, gives us a description of how it works. Returns a number of items in a group. Null values are not counted. OK, so essentially when it's talking about items, it's talking about whatever you've put inside of that expression. So in this simple example, if I was to take the subcategory and just hold command or control on the windows and drag it in here and hit apply, OK, we'd get a count now. If you're probably thinking, well, what's going on here? Um, let's just do count, click apply, click OK. What do you think we should see? Let me just drag this in here and just hold this just, just for a very few seconds. What do you think you should see? OK, I'll show you. This is what we get. So you can see that this says 775, which if you think about it, we're just counting the subcategory. Like, how does that work? Well, it's essentially just going to count all the items it sees again and again and again. So at this point, when we've got subcategory in our view, it's just counting the number of records in there. It's just counting the number of different sort of items that are in there. And if you look at our data set, if I just go over here to this sort of summary, um, you'll see that our, our data set has 9,994 rows. And so if I was to uh, just click on uh, this column here, you can generally see that this is going to add up to roughly the same number here. Yeah. So it's just worth bearing in mind that count should only really be used where you don't mind something being counted more than once. There is only one subcategory in this binders grouping, but it's counting each and every instance once. And so therefore this ends up just being like a row count essentially. OK, let's create another one. Let's use count distinct this time and you can see the difference. So let's uh, go in here, create calculated, calculated field and just type in count distinct. And now let's do subcategory. And that is now going to work really nicely. So we're going to call this count D uh, for short and then hit apply. OK, like, OK, drag it in. And now what do you think we should see? We're counting the subcategory. It's doing a distinct count. So that essentially means if it sees one item multiple times, it will only count it once. So let me drop this in and now you get the number one. So there you go. You're basically seeing the difference between count and count distinct side by side. It's a very, very simple function. And the cool thing is you can start to think of this in sort of really interesting ways. I've sometimes used the count distinct to make sure that I've got a distinct number of items in my grouping because essentially I don't want to I don't want a calculation to fire off unless I'm actually I'm absolutely dealing at the lowest level of that grouping, which means there's only one item, one distinct item in that group. So that's a very sort of popular use case. But generally speaking, you can use this in lots and lots of different scenarios. Um, counting is just a very common thing in Tableau. It's one of those things where if you try and come up with use cases in your head, it sort of sounds like, you know, why would you ever use this? But, you know, you start doing visualizations, you start working in, you know, fast moving consumer goods or uh, product hierarchies, and then suddenly the count distinct becomes very, very useful because it gives you hard numbers for what's in your data set. And it's actually quite commonly used for data quality issues as well. You know, if your count distinct of items or count doesn't quite match up with the number of rows in your data set, then remember it doesn't count nulls. So you immediately get a very easy way to start to do data quality checks just using the count function. So it's a really, really good function to use. So that's pretty much it. Uh, this account function, there's not much more to show. This is probably one of my shortest videos this week. So um, yeah, that's it. If you've enjoyed this video, you know what to do. 
If you haven't, um, you know, drop me a comment below. Let me know what you'd like to see. I've absolutely loved the suggestions, by the way. Everyone wants me to go down into Tableau Server, row level security. I'm going to get there in the end. Um, you know, I have to sort of brush off the cobwebs a little bit as well and, and then sort of uh, remind myself how to do half of that stuff. So uh, we'll get to that very, very soon and we'll make sure that we get the content up at some point in the near future. But until then, I'll catch you in the next video.